everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to part two in our behavioral health series. And this is for Serpente Sunday on Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. And this is going to be for Sunday, May 8th, 2022. We're going to be talking about handling and cleaning stress. So this is just a behavioral wellness reminder. Reptiles respond to stress in similar ways as other animals, including humans, and that handling for enclosure cleaning can be a source of stress. The snake's brain and central nervous system has the same or homologous structures as other vertebrates and produces the same neurochemicals and hormones, including stress hormones, and the snake's brain and body reacts to stress similarly to that of other vertebrates. This is just a graphic to remind you of what the snake's brain consists of. It has a forebrain, a midbrain, and a hindbrain, just like us. So the telencephalon and diencephalon are what handles smell, taste, rhythm, sensory, motor integration, and mediation. And I've got that circled because mediation is involved in the stress response and mediation of stress. The mesencephalon has to do with the endocrine system or the neuroendocrine functions. And that absolutely has to do with the stress response because that's the system that produces stress hormones. And then also visual processing. And then the rhombencephalon is hearing and balance. And then the physiologic responses to things like stress. A considerate approach to cleaning is what we try to take here and what I would recommend to you as an option for consideration with your own snakes and other reptiles. So balancing hygiene with stress mitigation, spot cleaning, partial cleaning, and determining when and if full cleanings are actually needed the consequences of removing familiar scents and chemical cues. These are all things that you wanna consider as far as optimizing welfare and reducing captivity stress in your snakes. So handling stress due to cleaning, can we mitigate that? Well, let's start there and talk about that in relation to these other things, including disturbances and disruption. Handling your snake to clean. Uh, I would try not to. Unless your snake comes to you, which my super dwarfs tend to do, I don't reach in and grab them out typically. They come out of their enclosures on their own and oftentimes they'll come up to me and use me as a climbing tree. Many snakes don't do that and many snakes are averse to handling. And so if that's the case with your snake, you wanna try not to handle them just for cleaning. So according to the stress and welfare section of Mater's Reptile and Amphibian Medicine and Surgery, handling is a stressor for captive snakes. Snakes innately perceive restraint as a threat. And in the wild, snakes associate direct restraint with consumption by a predator. So they have an instinctual fear response or defensive response to handling by humans. Handling increases the production of stress hormones, including corticosterone and adrenal catecholamines. And stress hormones are elevated in snakes, even when they are used to people, but some can acclimate to tolerate handling. So I just tried to put Ryder on a climbing tree and he turned around to climb back on me. That was his choice. I'm not forcing this interaction. He's doing this on his own. Most snakes are not in this category and we need to be respectful of that. And I wanna also mention that although Maters talks about that snakes are innately averse to restraint and that they perceive restraint as a threat, most vertebrates do. That includes humans and other mammals. Nobody likes to be forcibly restrained. 
So cleaning with no or minimal handling, how the heck do we do that? Well, here are some options for consideration. These are all things that I do or have done. Clean while the snake is asleep and leave them alone where they're at. You can clean around them or block the entrance to their hide while you clean. Now you only wanna do this if it is not going to distress them. And this is where you have to know your individual snake and you have to be able to recognize the signs of distress. So if their hide has a bottom, you can lift the hide out with the snake in it and place it somewhere safe and quiet while you clean. And if your snake is awake and active, you can offer them the opportunity to come out on their own and explore while you're cleaning. And if it's not safe to do that, you can offer them the opportunity to come out on their own and then you can pick them up and put them in a holding container or an exercise tent or someplace that is safe for them to be. You can use target training or station training to have the snake voluntarily shift out to a temporary holding area while you clean. And then you just reverse any of these processes when you're done cleaning and you wanna put the snake back. All right, remember that cleaning is not an emergency. Do not be intrusive and remove your snake from their hide, ledge, branch, or other resting place and force handling unless it's due to exigent circumstances. Also, don't wake them up. Exigent circumstances are those things which would be considered emergencies, like you have to evacuate, there's a fire, there's some reason that you have to grab your snake and leave your house suddenly. Um, if your snake has a veterinary appointment and they're sleeping or hiding, then be as thoughtful as possible as you take them out to go to that vet appointment. Let's talk about sense and chemical cues. Chemical communication is an important part of a snake's life. Sense, pheromones, and chemoreception are all critical components to prey detection, foraging, predator detection, recognition of other species, recognition of their own conspecifics, and of individual snakes. They're also important in mate choice, alarm signaling, and territoriality. So removal and sense of chemical cues isn't the best for your snake. It can distress them. Evidence suggests that snakes leave pheromones on bedding to mark territory. So the possibility that a chemical form of self-recognition exists in squamate reptiles was just recently supported by a study that was by Gordon Burghardt in garter snakes, and it showed that male garter snakes were able to recognize their own scents. And the, they're talking about in this paper that this is sort of the snake version of the mirror test that is done in some mammals. And then removal of feces and enclosure cleaning has been shown to contribute to stress and even disrupt reproduction in snakes. Let's talk specifically about general disturbances and disruption and the stress that is potentially caused by that. Snakes have a physiological response to habitat disturbances and substrate changes. And this is detected by increased levels of glucocorticoids or the stress hormones, either in blood or in feces. And the increase in glucocorticoid levels following frequent habitat disturbances did not subside in a recent study for over a month after the frequent habitat disturbances stopped. And so this demonstrates that snakes may have a very long recovery time after experiencing a stressor, or it may take them a very long time to adjust to new physiological baselines. And this was from a study by Lauren Augustine et al. in snakes at the St. Louis Zoo that just came out in 2022. Let's talk about habitat types and stress. This is mentioned in maters. Reptiles studied in naturalistic environments were shown to exhibit less stress than those in clinical environments. And enclosures that require less cleaning and disturbances may reduce stress. However, poorly maintained naturalistic or bioactive environments potentially increase exposure to pathogens and disease. So how do we do both? How do we balance hygiene and stress reduction at the same time? Properly maintained bioactive enclosures that require less cleaning and disturbances 
are probably optimal for your snake. And that's just because the bioactive nature of it requires it to be cleaned less. Naturalistic enclosures that can be easily spot cleaned are likely less stress for your snake. And that's because if you maintain these in such a way where they have naturalistic opportunities um, to hide or to climb or to exhibit natural behaviors and go to places where they feel safe while you're doing spot cleaning, it's going to improve their welfare. And then doing partial cleanings, partial substrate changes so that the familiar scents are always present and you're not removing them all at once can help. And then saving some used substrate or some of the old substrate to place over new substrate when you do a complete deep clean or a total clean out is a good idea because you are adding some of their old familiar scents to this environment that you have just completely cleaned out and wiped clean of scents. And then if you can clean the furnishings and the habitat space at two different times, then you're always leaving some familiar scents present. So in other words, if you can take out all the enclosure furnishings and clean those and put them back, but not wipe down the floor or change the substrate or wipe down the walls, there's still going to be familiar scents in there. And then conversely, if you take out all the furnishings but don't clean them, do your deep clean of the walls, the substrate, and all of the surfaces, and then put the furnishings back in without having cleaned those, those are still going to have familiar scents on them. And so these are compromises you can make to help the snakes be a little less stressed when you do these bigger cleanouts. Remember that the constraints of captivity contribute to psychological and behavioral compromise or stress to snakes and other reptiles under captive management. Just the state of being in captivity is stressful to all life. And there are many, many, many studies that support that freedom is a primary reinforcer, that the perception of choice and control is a primary reinforcer, and that any time organisms are physically restrained or have the psychological perception of being restrained or constrained, it is stressful. So steps to mitigate captivity stress should be part of the routine care plan that you have for all of your snakes. And failure to address this can result in stereotypies, maladaptive behavior, absence of normal behavior, and general poor welfare. <laughs> These are the resources that I used in order to make this presentation for you. As always, I encourage you to research for yourself, read these for yourself, and think for yourself. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.